Hello YouTube. Um, today's video is going to be basically fire lighting techniques from traditional to modern techniques. Um, like I, uh, I'm going to show you some various ways of uh, using these. I'm no expert on any of these so it's just what I've learnt myself from various sources, YouTube, uh, books and people that have taught me. So some of them are Obviously I'm going to show you what I, what I do as I go along, some of them might work, some of them might not work, so whatever doesn't work I'm going to leave that in, that will just be a foul on my part, obviously it doesn't, not necessarily, doesn't mean it doesn't work in the field, um, other people may have different ways and different techniques of, of using this, these different uh, traditional fire lighting uh, or modern techniques, so um, I'm just going to take you on a journey basically and show you different different ways of starting fires. Um, I'll give you a quick sneak preview of what we're going to be using. Um, we're going to be using a fire piston, we're going to be using a solar, um, a solar, I don't know what this is called, a solar fire starter I guess. We're going to be using um, flint and steel, which I've got here somewhere, I can find it. Flint and steel, which is another traditional. I've got a ferric lens, which is basically just a um, magnifying glass, and I'm also going to use finally a friction fire set. Um, these are the techniques I'm going to show for the uh, traditional. There are other techniques out there. There's a lot more techniques that I'm not showing you that I don't know myself. So as I learn, I may do another video later on and show more techniques. Um, like I said, I'm no expert on any of these. So I'm just basically showing you ways of starting fires. Um, best thing to do is go out yourself and try it. I don't practice a lot of these myself. I'm doing I'm doing this now, practicing as much as I can. So. Um, and then I'm going to show you more of the um, traditional, uh, sorry, I'm going to show you more of the modern techniques. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show all the traditional techniques in the woods, because it's more of a traditional style. And I'm going to probably fi film the second part of this, the modern techniques, in the back garden or something. Because um, I just want to do a little spin on things, basically. Um, so yeah, hopefully you learn something from this. Most of you that watch this probably know a lot of these techniques or all of them, maybe even more. Um, but some of you are watching these, you may not have seen any of these before, so it's all it's all a learning curve. Um, and you can get a lot of these online, or you can make them yourself. And it's just good skills to practice, really. Um, it's very good to to come out and try these from from even the traditional traditional ones to the modern ones. So it's well worth having a go. And I'm going to start using more traditional methods to um, practice because it's, it's really handy and it just goes back to basics really. Um, and then I'm going to do a pros and cons at the end just to say what I think of each product or each each method and see see you know if it's if it's practical in the in the field or not or if, if it's just a waste of time. Um, anyone that watching this, if I'm doing stuff wrong, please let me know or if there's tips that you can give me. Uh, to, to better my understanding or techniques that I'm doing, please let me know. Like I said, I'm not an expert on any of this, just want to show people different ways of starting fires. So, yeah, hopefully you enjoy the video. Um, and we'll get down and we'll start on the first, the first um, traditional um, fire lighting technique, and we'll go from there. So, stay tuned, guys. So, guys, the first um, traditional technique everyone's probably heard of this a lot of you that um, are into bushcraft will know flint and steel is the most it's the um, one of the most well used traditional apart from um, fire sticks um, used fire fire starting technique so this is just a Rowan um, SE uh, basically a fire striker to strike the uh, flint and also it can be used for bow drills as well that's why it's got the cut out in there um, 
hopefully it's coming out well this footage because I'm I've got the uh, light beaming down so I don't know how well it's going to come out hopefully it comes out okay so basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece of flint which has uh, also been napped as well as you can see it's quite sharp on the edges I'm going to get my piece of charcoal off I'm going to fold the charcoal off into various pieces so I'll just fold that into four sections now then I'm going to basically find a nice spot sharp edge that's quite thin at that edge there so I'm going to use that edge I'm going to basically place the the flint on that, uh, sorry the uh, char cloth onto that um, so as I strike it should catch so this is like I said I'm, I'm no expert this is just a trial and error basically Here we go. Just had to change hands there because the position I was doing it in was um, was uh, not comfortable. Now it's getting really hot now, too hot to handle. But basically, that's the um, that's the char cloth uh, flint and steel technique. You don't have to use char cloth for this. Uh, there's other various ten uh, various tinders you can find in the woodland, um, but char cloth is one of the easiest to ignite. Uh, cramp ball is also an, another uh, good source to um, start. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quick put this out because this is going to this will just carry on burning for ages now. So what I'm doing is I'm going to smother it with um, some moss. There's plenty of moss around here. Put that in some moss like that, and that should uh, eventually just smother it. Leave that down there so I keep an eye on it. Okay, guys. So this this is um, I've had to move the camera to get a different angle on this because the sun's obviously in the position for this um, traditional firelighting technique. This is the fer fer ferric lens, I think it's called. Um, I may have pronounced that wrong, but basically it's just a magnifying glass, um, and you're using the sun's rays to superheat a, con a combustible product or combustible material. So. Uh, I've moved it about so I can sort of get a better angle. Um, what I've got here is some cat cat and nine towels or whatever it's called. So this should this should take hopefully. Um, so basically, what you want to do is you want to move the I don't know how well that's coming out on camera, but hopefully it does. You want to move the um, ferric lens into position so you're basically creating a, a beam a beam of light onto the the thing you want to combust. Just hold it there for a few seconds, that should start to go soon. Let's try something else. Right, I've got some horseshoe fungus now. Let's try that. Here we go, straight away. So that didn't take long. That didn't take long at all, guys. So it just goes to show. Depends on what tinder you're using um, at the time to basically get it started. Um, I was using the wrong tinder, 
but it's a big learning curve so that's the way I see it live and learn um, but yep that's pretty much burnt up instantly that's that's still quite hot there but that's um, another traditional fire lighting technique all I'd say guys is go out and practice which is what I'm doing today um, and try different different techniques with different materials because I've just learnt that using certain materials it's not going to combust, combust as quick as certain other materials so um, just for demonstration what I'll do is I'll quickly get some of this uh, where is it I've got some old crappy cramp balls that I tried earlier that was an epic foul now these have added these cramp balls but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try one just to see if this makes any difference I don't think it will but I'll be surprised if it does I think that's taken I think that's taken There you go, it has taken. So, even though I said the cramp balls are rubbish earlier, maybe it's just my technique uh, that I was using that's not that good. Or maybe this, you, don't, you can't use cramp balls for that technique, I'm not too sure, but it just goes to show different stuff works on different things, so try trial and error. But there's the, there's the cramp balls, and also, just to be on the safe side, I'll put that there, so it goes out. Don't want that starting any fires. What I'll do is I'll try a little bit of this charcoal off as well, just a tiny little bit. I'll put that there. I'm gonna try that, see if that catches. There we go guys that's gone as well so what I've learned today is um, there's definitely three three tinders that work very well and there's a few tinders that I've tried some of them I've tried off camera that you won't see um, that haven't worked quite as well so another traditional uh, fire lighting technique okay guys so this is another technique uh, I'm going to show you now this works on the same principle as the last technique I showed you um, the ferric lens. This is a uh, solar, I use the sun again, a solar, um, I'm trying to get you in a shot here guys, sorry. This is a solar uh, heater, so if I just get the lid off and show you. So I'll use the sun again, basically you've got to line the sun's rays up and inside you have this little piece here which unclips and it can be a little, little fucker to get off sometimes so here we go, it has come off easier this time than I thought it would. So basically this just clips onto here. And it is quite stiff. I might be putting that around the wrong way as well, I think. Am I? There we go. So, I don't know where you can see that, but what you do is you put your tinder, I'll try and get it so the sun's not glaring. In the, you put your tinder in the tip there. It doesn't hold on very well. Let's get that back on. You put your piece of tinder in the top there and then you just line it up with the sun and again it should start to uh, superheat what you're trying to light. So what I'll do again, I'm going to use traditional because I want to keep everything traditional in this in the traditional fire lighting. So char cloth. I'm going to put a piece of char cloth there if I can. And I'm going to just line it up so Shouldn't take long at all guys. See smoke coming off it already. There we go. Don't know where you can see that on camera, but there's smoke starting to come out of that. And that's good to go. If you carry on blowing that, that will um, catch.
catch. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let that catch because I don't want it to. Um, let's try something more. Uh, let's see if I've got a piece of birch bark here. Let's see if that works. Let's see how long it takes for a piece of birch bark to uh, go. Like I said, this is trial and error, so this may not work as well. I'm just gonna leave that in there. I don't think it's gonna light, to be honest with you. But I'm just testing it out just to see. I don't think that's gonna go. Uh, let's try. Let's try some of. A bit awkward getting it on there, but. Try a little piece of this cramp ball. If I can get a piece that's not going to break in my hands to a million pieces. There we go. Let's try this. Problem is, I've got to try and balance it on there somehow. There we go. See if this works. I think it's going to take a bit of time, but I think it will go eventually. You get the idea anyway. I'm not going to sit here and bore you watching watching this thing light, but I think that will go over time. If you left that there long enough, if you rested it against something and came back, I think that that would pretty much catch, and you'd be able to start your fire that way. So, just another another way of showing you a, a different technique. A traditional technique. Um, I haven't got many more traditional techniques to show you that, that I know personally. There might be more out there that I haven't shown you today and if there is please let me know, comment below. I'd like I love to know different, I like to learn different things so it's always interesting finding different techniques. But what I forgot to mention as well guys is um, before I showed this, this is also um, waterproof. It's got an o-ring all the way around it so if you wanted to, you could put tinder into here, um, being dry or wet, doesn't really matter. Prefer preferably dry, it would start quicker, but even if it was wet, it would dry out quick enough in the sun, because you're using the sun's heat to superheat something. So yeah, you could use something in there. Um, it's made from aluminium, so it's not going to rust in the field either. And you can hear the air getting pushed out. So yeah, it's a good little product to carry about. I haven't used it a lot be honest a lot of these traditional fire techniques I don't use them enough as much as I'd like to use them um, purely because of time reasons really I just like to get out in the field and just start a fire but that's just laziness but I am going to start using these more because um, I need to learn different ways different techniques and it, it all helps so just uh, just something I forgot to mention I thought I'd add that on to the end of this um, this traditional technique Okay guys, this one's a bit of a tricky one. I don't know whether to put this into the traditional or whether to put it into the modern um, fire line techniques. I, I believe it's been around for a long time, so um, I haven't done much research into it, but I, I believe this has been used in the old days. They used to make them out of wood. Nowadays they're plastic or metal, but this is basically a um, tube that you put a tinder in the top, uh, it's called a fire piston by the way, you put a tinder in the top of it and you use air pressure to um, superheat again the uh, combustible material. Now the preferred method for this you can use uh, quite a lot of products but I found that works best is char cloth, uh, it tends to stay in there better so you are limited to this technique, you are limited to certain things there may be other, other stuff you can use in there that I don't know, I haven't, I haven't researched. Um, but yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to use some charcoal off. I'm going to stuff a bit of charcoal off in there and see if it works. You do have to, there is a technique to using this. You can't just pick this up and use it if you've never used it the first time. It took me a few goes 
to practice with this and I still ain't an expert on using this so um, the way I've learned is to basically to the harder you, the quicker and harder you push it down and I mean quick and hard as well the, the better you've chance you've got of igniting the uh, the material you've got in the end so we'll try it now see if we can get something lit um, let's just get some material now uh, you don't want too much in these it's better to have little little amounts so as you can see I've just stuffed that in the end there it's only a tiny minute amount and then what you want to do is you want to put that in there now the technique that I found best to use is to actually put it upside down and, and hit it as hard as you can onto the onto whatever surface you're on so you can do it on your hands but I'll, I'll show you both ways anyway so basically you want to get it and you want to uh, whether that's lit I don't know yep it's taken first time so you can see the smoke coming off it that's if the camera's picking up so I'm just blowing that I think it's gone out actually so what we'll do is we'll give it another one see it does take a bit of a bit of persuasion didn't work first time that time so we have to hit it harder this time need to like I said I'm no expert on these so if I'm doing this wrong guys just let me know but I believe you have to leave a little bit of air in there just so it can breathe all right okay what we're gonna do is we're gonna try it the other the other way the way that I always tend to get it lit is this way so what you're gonna do is you wanna get get it and bang it all the way I think the trouble is as well is I think you have to push it all the way to the end so there's literally no air left in there <laughs> I think if you leave any air at the end if you don't fully insert this all the way to the end then it's not gonna ignite and I think that's the trouble that I was having before I think you wanna get it all the way this out, I think it's too much in there. And now the uh, now the tinders come out and it's in the bottom so not my favourite method to be honest with you but that's probably because user error rather than the product <laughs> product itself <laughs> but like I said I need to practice really and get used to using it so I'm not going to go any further with this one it's just showing you basically how, how to start the uh, how to use the product I haven't used it like it should be should have been used one downside I would say, or a couple of downsides that I don't like about this, one you do have to keep this lubricated, as you can see it has got a fine oil uh, rubbed all over it, um, you have to keep it lubricated and the o-ring lubricated as well, just helps with the friction when you're pushing down, um, I think it's big and bulky, I don't like, this is hard work, um, compared to other methods I think it's hard work and there's only certain tinders you can use as well so there's a lot of downsides uh, that I can see personally than upsides um, I may be wrong um, if you can see any anything that this, this has got an advantage over than other things then let me know but I personally don't like it it's just a trial and error thing that I've bought to lock it in place so it doesn't fall out you basically take the, the bottom of this like I just have if I take this off now and hold this upside down this will just this this should just drop out well, it doesn't actually it's got pressure in there but it can potentially fall out whereas if I put this in there now like so there's no way that's gonna fall out because as soon as you 
it sucks it back in again. So that's another little thing I learned when I first got it. I was I was struggling to keep the lid in place. And to take it out, you just simply take the bottom off, pull it out, and then you're ready to go again. So yeah, basically it's, a, it's an easy setup. It's nice. It's a nice. It's a nice technique, but I don't personally prefer it. It's just another another technique. And like I said, I, I don't know whether to put this in. I've put this into to tr traditional fire lighting because I'm not too sure whether this should be in this category or whether it should be in the modern. So I'm going to put it in this one. If you think I'm wrong, let me know. Um, so we're going to move on to the next one. I think this may be the final technique. I'm not sure. Um, we're going to move on to the next one, and, and then we're going to go from there. Okay, guys, save the best till last. Um, this is the last technique I'm going to show today. There are other techniques out there that probably that I haven't shown you today, um, purely because I haven't tried them or I don't know them yet. So if there is other stuff out there, hopefully I can learn it in the future and show and share my knowledge um, or sh share the share the the product as, it, as I'd call it. Um, there's two different um, friction fire techniques. This is the easiest I find with um, like a bowstring, a piece of wood, and obviously your um, base that you're going to use to create the ember. Um, there is another one that you can use which is just by hand. Obviously, I've tried that with an epically fouled. It's very hard technique to, to practice uh, unless you do it all the time. Uh, it's a hard one to master. So basically, I'm not going to show that today. Uh, but similar similar product to this, rather than using this to do all the work, you're basically using your hands to do the work. Um, you've probably seen it before. So this technique here, I may I may change the camera angle. I don't know yet, but if I can get it in camera angle, I'll, I'll try and show it this way. So this is pre-made. You can make this; it's quite easy. You need to find preferably a new piece of wood. This is old. Uh, I've made this a long time ago, so it's started to crack now. But you want some new sapling that's going to be very flexible. Uh, this was flexible to start with, but now as it's aged, the wood's aged and it's it's dried out. It's started to crack. So that's one one negative thing about this. You do have to keep making these. I mean, this has lasted a year, so it ain't too bad, I suppose. All you want to do is cut a little notch out. Um, cut a little notch out at either end. And just tie a piece of um, this is just paracord, and as you can see, it's not. When I first tied this, this was quite tight, um, but now it's not tight at all. It doesn't need to be tight, mega tight, because it's going to get tight as soon as you put this on. So um, you can see how loose this is at the moment. This was just a piece of um, branch that I've cut down. I've just used an axe to um, taper the ends. Um, one end you can see has been well used. That's that's called caused the embers, and that ends just the piece that goes into the bit you hold at the top. Um, and again, this is just another piece of wood. I don't know what wood this is. This is something I just found. I've used. It was this was the, this is like I said trial, um, and you just cut a slot out a V shape. It has to be a V shape because you want airflow to get into there. And you want to get a, a knife and just cut a little notch out. I may show that actually now. I might do an, another one. Um, so basically, you want to just get a little little notch around there. You just want to start it off like that. So now you've started it, you can basically get your saw cut a V into that and then you'll have that there. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that again but you get the idea you, you do that get your saw cut a V into it and then that's that's where your ember falls down into here onto the base of whatever you're gonna put it on. Today I'm gonna put it onto this piece of birch that I've got um, just to catch the ash and the hot ember and we'll go from there. Right so I'm gonna try and set up here hopefully this is in shot move some of this out of the way. So basically you want to put let's put it round the way the camera can see. Camera can see better that way hopefully. 
So you want to, preferably you want to do this on the floor. I'm doing this on a piece of wood, which ain't ideal. You want it somewhere flat surface where you can put your foot on and hold it in position. So I'm not showing you the best technique here, but I'm not here to show you the techniques and how to do this because I'm no expert. So I'm just showing you ways of starting fires. Then you want to, this is the trickiest bit, you want to angle this so it's roughly like that. I don't know if it's going to come out on camera. Roughly like that. So you want it, want it like that basically. So that bit's behind there and that bit's wrapped around there. So what you want to do then, this is the hardest bit, is you want to twist it. I never do this in one go, I always, I always do it in a few goes. You want to twist it like that. You see how much tension that's putting on? Uh, that's putting a lot of tension on that now. There's a hell of a lot of tension on that. That's pulled that really taut now. That's why it's cracked. So that's why I said to you earlier, you don't need a lot of tension on it because this, this actually pulls a lot of tension on. So as you can see, it's, if I let this go now, it's going gonna, it's gonna to flick off. So that's on there now. So this is the bit where you, the tr another tricky bit we want to set up. So you want to keep the tension on. You want to get this in position, which is there. Now I'm going to hold this with the tip of my hand. What I normally do is put my foot on there. I'm probably not going to be able to do this. So I'm going to have to try and do it to the best of my ability with the other foot. So you can see it in shot. Okay. Like so. And then you need the other bit. If I can find it. You can use anything for this. Um, I use this, but you can use uh, a piece of bark that's been, again, hollowed out and just put it on the top. A um, piece of wood, anything you've got really. A shot glass works well. Now this is going to be awkward doing this because I've got my, my the wrong leg in the way basically. Because I'm doing this for the camera shot. So all you do is you twist it like so. And you get the idea. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna start um, an ember because, like I said before, I'm no expert. I'm not showing you how to. I'm not showing showing you um, everything on these. I just want to show you the basic techniques uh, for ways of starting fires. So what you do is create a little pile of ash, an ember there, which you can then dump into some tinder, for example, something like this. You could dump it into that, um, or anything really that's going to combust quite quick.